Like this. Okay, brother. Quick review of what we covered today. Um, we started by harmonizing all the scales. I'm going to do these in G, but you can do them in um, D, G, uh, and, and E especially is good. Harmonizing the major scale in fourths. Okay, then re uh, removing four and seven to harmonize a major pentatonic. These are nice for sliding. about different articulations, hammering on the bottom voice and playing the top voice. It's kind of like what you do with six, and then reverse, uh, you go from three to four in the reverse. You have to do things like this that you like them. Sorry, it's hard to do on this acoustic. Doesn't sound as good in the major. Um, and then we harmonize the minor pentatonic, or start with just a straight minor scale. Two will be the diminished. Now leave out the second degree in the flat sixth to get your minor pentatonic. This is like the holy grail of classic rock riffs in some ways. You pointed out the Zeppelin. And um, I think. Um, but it's something like that. Uh, and then... You get all three notes, so you're kind of in G, G of open tuning, kind of. Okay. Uh, put it on the top two strings. It's very important here. Okay, and then your lesson from last time is this idea of playing that and then adding the high note to make a... A chord. So you're going from a fourth to a sixth, and you're kind of outlining the major, the the chord of each scale degree. E minor, D major, C major. That wasn't really the lesson for today, although I'm going to digress on one more thing. The other half of that last lesson from two weeks ago was that you did the same exercise using thirds and fifths. So here's a major third on E, perfect fifth. Minor third on F sharp, two chords. This is worth keeping in the repertoire indefinitely as an exercise and a, sort of a thought pattern. in the minor. But what we did is we isolated the two minor third pairs from each pentatonic scale. So if you play an E major pentatonic, G sharp to B is a minor third, and C sharp to E. And then we isolated those on the fretboard and used two strings to play them. G sharp and B, C sharp and E. Then we extracted the same two from the minor scale, E and G, and B to D. Now we play those on multiple strings. E, G, B, D. And by putting them all together, we get this pattern. Which of course you can keep going up, why not? You can go to G again. And then you can do the same thing in reverse. You can go from this high G to this C sharp and E, open position. And then we're going to expand it to do the hammer-on box. Now, let's include the first string. Sorry. idea. Let's chromaticize the bottom note. One thing I 
something I didn't show you, which is cool, is to play the high note and then go chromatically down the bottom note. Wait, no, that's not what I wanted. Actually, that's a little nerdy. I don't do that one. It was stupid. Um, but I did show you the, the backslide idea, which I do like a lot. Um, And a corollary to that is just sliding in chromatically to it. A corollary to that is just blazing through it in double stops. Finally, noting where you can bend and where you can't. So if you start in the open position, okay, this first note is an F sharp, the second degree, very bendable, half whole or one and a half. I can't bend that far on this guitar. Okay, next, now we have a high A, which is the same thing, bend it all you want. Okay. This is the one you have to be very careful with. So the C sharp, which is a major six, just up to half step to D. Okay, this one has a similar quality. It's a tonic when you get to the highest note. You have to go up a full minor third to get to G. Okay, and then you're just back where you started. It's kind of fun to go. Well, that was shitty. Anyways, the idea is creativity. So you think of better stuff than that, and I look forward to hearing it next time. Later, bro.